Anthony, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We've just been talking about um, essential products and how amazing that is in, in America, really, that it is now an essential service to be able to have cannabis. It's quite an astonishing thing. It's not written into any rules or laws, but there's a state of emergency and you can get your weed delivered. It's pretty out there. And the guy on the feed now, um, he's, he's been on the show before. His name's Anthony Reese, and he's from the Traditional Natural Health Alliance. And he has been battling in the background really like this silent warrior to make sure that in part, the, as far as I can tell, the health shops in South Africa can now reopen and remain open because as Anthony puts it, all we've got left here is our immune systems and they were trying to take it away. Anthony, thanks for hanging on so long and thanks for coming on to the show. Tell us a little bit of what, about what's happened in the, with this turnaround with the government in the last couple of days. Yeah, I just wanted to check the mic case can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, cool. Right, um, we had a situation here in the Western Cape um, after the lockdown where bureaucrats in our provincial government sent the police and the army into health food stores to shut them down forcibly at the barrel of a gun, literally. And um, it created quite a, a tension in the industry. We also heard sporadic reports that health food stores around the country, as far as Limpopo, um, Nelspruit, uh, Potchestrum, etc., had similar police action where police were walking into health food stores saying they're not essential services and wanting to arrest the owners, which is actually quite bizarre. So we jumped into action immediately as soon as we heard that, and we, we looked at the law, um, and we realized that health food stores primarily sell medicines and food, which are exempt substances in the exemption lists. So we spent a good part of the last five days battling with uh, senior bureaucrats in, in various government departments, right up to um, premiers of provinces, etc. And we managed to crack it here in the Western Cape. We had a pronouncement yesterday from the um, Western Cape government through uh, the MEC David Manier for health and, and, and others from trade and industry with a proclamation that came out yesterday that health food stores can remain open. So that was a great victory for the health food stores and it set a precedent for the rest of the uh, provinces, we believe, and we're working very hard banging on the doors of the DTI at the moment to have a national proclamation on this front. It's absolutely extraordinary that they would think about closing such things in the first place. We've had, we had this conversation last week, all these arbitrary things that you can and cannot buy because of this lockdown. Um, it, you right. Go ahead. Now that's the problem. You see, the, the arbitrariness is coming from people who are interpreting it, lay, lay policemen and lay soldiers who walk into stores and don't actually understand the... Uh, regulations that were promulgated under for the lockdown regulations. So, you know, if they get an order from someone up on the top that says, you know, close everything down except Woolworths and Pick and Pay, they're going to follow those orders. And this, this was the problem, where a lot of the health food stores were based inside shopping centres, and they came into shopping centres to check for compliance that other stores weren't open, and they wouldn't hear anything about it, even though they were shown that probably 80% of what was sold in the stores is food, and the other 20% were medicines, um, which are all essential items. Absolutely crazy, ludicrous kind of stuff. But, you know, that's the way it is. But so we, we're lucky we've turned it around. And you say that you've, this is like, this is just the Western Cape at the moment. This is a... a you've earned... Well, you've... The, the, most, of the, most of the complaints were coming in from the Western Cape. We believe there was a woman by the name of Helen Davies, who's the chief director of the Department of Economic Development and Tourism. She's yeah. the one who sent in all the um, law enforcement agencies to close the health food stores. We wrote uh, a letter to her, two letters to her over the last five days, absolutely no response. So we had to go higher, and uh, we had an ear with the premier of the province and Within an hour or two of getting to him, everything sorted itself out. 
Wow. Well, we know that we know that lady from. We know that lady. How can the people rely on that medicine? Well, that's it. You know, complementary medicine, health supplements, and these things are, we believe, a fundamental choice of people in South Africa. We have, in our laws, we we already recognise these things as complementary medicines, health supplements, etc. We recognise the practitioners who who dispense these things uh, in law. So it makes no sense that these medicines would now be dealt with any differently to pharmaceutical medicines, for that matter. And uh, that was part and parcel of our argument. Does, it, does this have any bearing on any of the, the scheduling of CBD? I mean, you go back and the CBD story goes back to the beginning of time. And uh, or there's still, we, we still have um, um, affiliate companies that have tons of CBD and bonded stories and total limbo. It doesn't do anything to release any of that story, does it, Anthony? No, it doesn't. And we're in a precarious situation with the CBD because CBD is still not considered a, an approved substance for foods, foodstuffs and beverages in this country. Our food control directorate still considers it illegal to add any CBD to foodstuffs. Um, and tons of products have been sitting embargoed in state warehouses around the country that have been imported and are not being released because senior people in the uh, the Directorate of Food Control in the Department of Health are not budging on the issue. Despite there has been uh, inter-departmental uh, discussions in this regard, um, everything has gone quiet now, and uh, we're going to have to raise this again after lockdown. It's unacceptable. Um, if, if, if CBD has been declared exempt as a medicine, it is not a medicine. And when you put it in your mouth and you swallow it, the only other alternative is that it's a food. <laughs> and you know, if, if they're saying, well, if it's if if it's not scheduled and it's not a medicine, but you can take it, it's all good. Um, how are you supposed to get it in your body? And yeah. the only way people are getting it is they drop it by tongue, or, or whatever it is, or, or you know, and or in edibles for for that for that matter, or beverages. And it's it's weird. We've got two arms of government that are not talking to each other and not not in sync with each other. No, that's it's unbelievable. Think, that's I don't the, even know what's going to happen to CBD uh, on the fifteenth of May when the twelve months is over for the exemption. There are all sorts of of uh, course shenanigans going on behind the scenes there as well. I forgot all about. I was going to ask what do you think is going to happen at the end of the twelve months because a lot of businesses have have put in a lot of money. A lot of people have invested a lot of money in, in CBD businesses. Well, that's the thing. You know, it's it's grown into quite a large industry. It's, it's formalizing. Uh, different trade associations are coming online and setting sort of uh, self-regulatory standards and are wanting to do the right thing. Uh, coming on board and have worked with the TNHA in the past. We were the guys who launched the high court application for CBD to be... Uh, descheduled, which we which we managed to do at the last hour before going to court in a in a, in a closed room meeting. Um, but the 12 months is up on the 15th of May, and we don't know if that exemption is going to be extended or not. We hope it's going to be extended. We don't believe the science has changed. We don't believe the risk base of the substance has changed in any significant way. In fact, more studies have come out showing how safe it is. So they can't turn around and put it into a schedule now. Uh, because schedules have to be commensurate with risk. And we don't believe the risk is there. It's no more risky than alcohol. Alcohol should be scheduled. We know that. Precisely. Precisely. We've all seen how social media is falling apart with no access to alcohol. And it's only been a week. And they I have know. time to stop it up. Yeah, well, yeah. There are, there are alternatives you can grow in the garden, I suppose. Indeed, and there are alternatives to uh, safe alcohol as well because they're going to be a whole bunch of pineapples and moonshine and sugar and shit in the backyard yeah. now. That is the future of alcohol if they don't do something. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've like, hmm. My you start community organization has got a, a WhatsApp group and uh, people are already sharing recipes how to brew beer at home, etc. Et so, yeah. It's a way of doing it. Even if you know, I've seen a lot of that being advertised, well, advertised with people talking of making their own booze. They're like, well, if we can't get it for the next three weeks, we might as well make our own. Yeah. No, well, that's yeah. um, that's the whole thing. 
you, you've, you've been allowed to since the beginning of time. There is no restriction on you brewing some beer at all. There, ne there never was, but uh, nobody really does. We used to, we grew up with it in England. It's part, it was part of life in England, growing, growing, uh, brewing beer. And I never really brewed one that I could ever say was at all plausible. They were all horrible. Um, uh, there's, people, there's, there's people on the feed that aren't really that impressed with CBD as a cons concept. Um, CBD, Corona-based Dacha. <laughs> uh, so let me get this clear. For, uh, for, uh, la a last point, Anthony. Let me just get this clear about CBD in a health food shop. If CBD was in a shop that was a, a health product shop, as long as there's no claims being made about it, it still can be sold as a health product on the high street? Well, we believe so, certainly. Um, there's a little caveat in that, in that because CBD is not scheduled and is not a medicine because it's exempt as a medicine, it's not a medicine, according to SAPRA, because if it's not scheduled, it's not a medicine. So <laughs> is it essential? Is, does it fall under the category of medicine? We would say yes, of course, but the SAPRA could turn around and say, no, it isn't because it's exempt as a medicine. But these are, these are small things, and, and the law should not uh, occupy itself with trivialities like this in a situation like right? um, Anthony, yeah, from... I think with bigger things, there's been a fish to fry at the moment. Exactly. I think the SAPRA has got its, uh, its, itself very busy at the moment uh, looking at all sorts of vaccines. <laughs>